And good afternoon, everybody. Nice to see a crowd here at the David Dunlop Observatory. My name is Paul Delaney from the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, and my job is to give you a little bit of insight into the planet Mars and how you can observe Mars <laughs> this coming uh, summer. You know, when you think about Mars, it's the fourth planet from the sun, but you know, everybody thinks about Mars in differing ways. From the point of view of science, Mars, of course, is the place where we're searching for life, signs of life, indications that we may not be the only form of life in this universe. From those of you who love science fiction, well, Mars is the launching point for all those invasions. You know, the science fiction books, the science fiction movies, Mars seems preoccupied with wanting to take us over. So it doesn't matter whether or not it's science or science fiction, everybody has heard about the planet Mars. Well, when we look back at Mars, obviously it's an object in the night sky which everybody is able to see as a point source, but our exploration of Mars in earnest started back in the 1960s when we launched our first sets of spacecraft towards Mars so that we could get up close and personal to this planet more so if you will than we were able to do with telescopes. So our first flyby of the planet occurred in 1965. That was the Mariner 4 spacecraft and it revealed a surface that was pockmarked and remarkably similar to the moon. And then by the time we got to 1971, that was the Mariner 9 spacecraft, we went into orbit and we were able to examine for long periods of time, months at a time, the goings on on the planetary surface. By the time we got to 1976, that was the Viking 1 spacecraft and we actually landed on the surface of Mars and we conducted science observations from the planetary surface, another planet. Very, very cool period of time. And then the next big adventure for Mars started in 1997 when we began to put rovers on the surface of Mars. That was the Pathfinder mission of 97. Of course, today we're all glued to the, uh, you know, to the media listening about the exploits of the Curiosity rover. In fact, only uh, Thursday there was an announcement that Curiosity, a rover that's running around a crater by the name of Gale Crater, pretending to be a bit of a mountain goat actually and climb a mountain called Mount Sharp, had discovered ancient organic molecules just below the surface of Mars. This is not life, although some of the media suggested it was, but it's not. These were just organic molecules that had survived the three billion year wait for Curiosity to dig them up. So our exploration of Mars continues with, with great excitement even to today. Well, what are some of the things that we know about Mars? Mars is about half the diameter of the Earth. That means it's about 6,000 kilometers and change in diameter. It's got a couple of tiny satellites. We, of course, have one very large satellite, our own moon. Well, Mars has got two very tiny satellites, Phobos and Deimos. Its day is about the same length as our day, 24 and a half hours. Its year, how long it takes to spin once around the sun, no, it's a bit longer than ours. It's nearly two years, 687 days. There are a lot of characteristics about Mars that make it very Earth-like. It has an atmosphere very thin, you wouldn't be able to breathe it, but there is an atmosphere there. There are clouds. In fact, it even snows on Mars, although the skiing conditions are really poor. But there are snowflakes that drift down from the clouds towards the planetary surface. So there's lots of similarities about Mars when you think about it compared to the Earth. It's got the largest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons. It's got a huge uh, trench cutting across the equator, which is about you know, a thousand times bigger than the Grand Canyon. The, you know, it's, it's, it's a really Earth-like planet in many respects, but it was really only hospitable over four billion years ago. So it is a destination. It's a place that we want to explore more and be able to understand the way it has formed and functioned and operated over the same time period that Earth has. And of course, here on Earth, we have no shortage of life forms. So the hope is that Mars may in fact be a destination for life as well. So those are some of the, the facts associated with Mars. How can you see it? Now, as Ian suggested, it is a good season for Mars this summer. In fact, on July 27th, that same day as the lunar eclipse is taking place, Mars will be high in the sky and it will be at what we call opposition. That means it is directly opposite the sun from the Earth's perspective. It rises at sunset and it sets at sunrise. So it's up all night. 
it's the closest it has been since 2003. It's still not very close. It's about 57 million kilometers away. But at that day, in fact, the next few days, it gets slightly closer. By July 31st, it's as close to the Earth as it's going to get. Those are the prime observing conditions. And so if you went to a telescope and you began to look through the eyepiece, you would begin to see a real disk. Okay, Unlike stars, which are only point sources, you would see a small round disk. And now, it's not nearly as big as the full moon, despite what some of the Mars hoaxes that go around the internet would claim, the disk is still quite small. It's around about, you know, 24 arc seconds. Well, I know you don't know what an arc second is, but for comparison, the moon is 1800 arc seconds across. So 24 arc seconds, it's not very big at all. About, you know, one and a half percent the size of the moon. But nonetheless, with a good telescope, which will be set up here at the David Dunlop Observatory during the month of July, you will be able to see polar ice caps. You will be able to see dark features on the surface, which represent differing parts of the planetary environment. It's well worth coming out to see. And in fact, if you miss the opportunity this summer, you won't get a better chance to have a look at Mars until 2035. So it's another 17 years away. This is definitely the summer to observe the planet Mars. So find yourself a telescope, have a good look at this tiny little disk, and make sure that you enjoy the opportunity that Mars this year will afford. Hopefully, as time goes by, certainly November of this year, there is another spacecraft en route to Mars. It will land and will continue the exploration of the planetary surface. Two more years from now, there are going to be two more rovers on the planetary surface. Perhaps within the next 10 years, we may see humans embark on a voyage to Mars. So if you're at all interested in observing the planet Mars to look at the future or look into the future, this is the summer to do it. So come out, have a look at Mars towards the end of July of this year. Thank you.